What's up guys and welcome. Today we are covering how to make malicious flash drives or CDs or floppies if you still use them, right? So whatever you want to make. But the point of this is, uh, firstly, I want to say thank you guys to everybody that subbed. We've had tremendous support. We've reached five over 500 subs now and we're doing um, a lot of great things. So I really appreciate it. This is the wrong USB, so I'm glad I looked at that. Um, I really appreciate it, and thank you guys so much for the support. Um, if, and the Patreon's doing great, so awesome content going on there. If you guys like this type of content, if you guys like a little bit more of the um, unfiltered, uncensored in the sense of hacking, then our my Patreon is where you want to be. Uh, definitely join the Discord if you guys want to join the uh, giveaway as well, which is going to be a key logger on the five. Since we reached 500, we're going to do it here in a couple weeks. Um, but anyway, let's go ahead and dive into it. So why would we want to make a malicious flash drive? That's the first question, right? And the reason I'm sitting so far back, if you guys can't tell, is I have a, my old laptop. My old laptop sitting in my lap because that's what we're going to use as an attack computer. Just to show you guys. Now, there's a few reasons why you'd want to make a, a malicious flash drive. Flash drive or CD or whatever. Um, one of the main reasons is pretty obvious, right? If I can get to your computer... I can just plug this in and now I have control of your computer, right? I don't have to sit back. Now, there's other reasons. So on pen tests, a lot of times what, what uh, especially physical pen tests, a lot of times what people will do is they'll go around and they'll just drop these. Now, one thing I'll tell you, if you're going to drop these malicious flash drives on purpose to try to get people, because the whole point is, right, you have this sitting here on a desk or on a floor, someone's going to pick it up and go, uh, it doesn't have a name on it, so let me plug it in and see if it's got someone's name on the file or something like that, right? A lot of people do this. These, if I have it correct, then I can get you to go ahead and plug this in, then automatically we have access, right? Now, I will say that the less conspicuous you make this, the better. So if you get a flash drive that looks like this, eh, it doesn't raise a lot of alarm, but it kind of does, you know. Um, use something silly. Use, like, the the little keychain flash drives or, uh, you know. And, and the more you make it look like it, it was an accident, the better. So, like, if this was a keychain flash drive and I had this key a key ring on it, I might break the key ring and set it down. So, it looks like, oh, the key ring broke and it fell, right? Stuff like that. So, keep that stuff in mind. But what what's the point, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to teach you how to create a reverse shell using just a flash drive. So this is pretty neat. So let's go ahead and hop into it. So you can you can do all kinds of things however you want to do it. You can make your own executable or whatever. But the easiest way to do this quickly is to use SET, which is Social Engineering Toolkit. We've used it quite a few times on this channel. And uh, yeah, we really like it. So here we go. Social Engineering Toolkit. We'll go ahead and put our password in. Now I'm gonna tell you this one is the the one I already have with the payload on it, and the reason I'm not going to I'm gonna make a payload, but the reason I'm not gonna make the payload is because I have to put my IP my public IP address in here, and I'm not gonna do that on here, and I don't it's not worth going back and editing the video when I can just put a fake one in and show you guys the same process. So here we go. So we're gonna go ahead and say social engineering attacks. And you see there's all kinds of them here, but we want Infectious Media Generator. And watch how easy this integrates with um, with Metasploit as well. So you can do file format exploits or standard format or standard Metasploit executable. I like Metasploit's um, shell, so I just use Metasploit. Alright, now here we go. Uh, I forget that you guys can't see that bottom. All right. Now, one thing I'm going to tell you guys is I will have a guide written up for my Patreon members on how to do this exactly, but you will need to actually have um, your your router port forwarded. Um, if you don't know how to do that, then maybe I'll create a video on that specifically if you guys, if a lot of people are having issues, um, but you, you'll have to port forward because if you don't, this is going to reach out, hit your router, and it doesn't know what to do with it, right? So, all right, 
So this would be what I'd actually probably use in a real scenario, which is reverse HTTPS tunnel. Now, the reason I would do that is because everybody by default pretty much has HTTPS unblocked, right? I chose, I chose a port 1234 on this, and that's what I'm going to do. So here, all right, so here we're going to do the reverse TCP meterpreter shell. You can do whatever you want. IP address for the listener. So here's where I didn't want to have to put my actual IP in. So I'm just going to do 123.123.123.123, right? It doesn't really matter. And then the port. So the port is what you're going to have to port forward. So I just do 1234 just to make it easy. All right, and you see generating the payload. Be patient. Now here's the here's the key. Make sure you pay attention to where it saves it. It'll always save it in the default location, but you can see it saves it in root.set. So you just have to plug your flash drive in. You have to move that root.set and then the payload.exe file over to your flash drive. Obviously, don't name it payload.exe. Name it something, you know, not dangerous just in case it, they don't have auto run on their computer. So that's the thing. If they don't have auto run on their computer, which um, I turned off on my computer specifically, but on my old computer, but if you don't have it auto run on, which most computers do by default, but it, if it doesn't, you need them to still click on it, right? So let's just say, name it something like, uh, I don't know, think of a common name, you know, think of Johnny's something, right? Because they might go, oh, I know John, but I don't know which John or something like that. So try to make it as appealing as possible to click on. All right, so create a listener right now. So yes, we want to go ahead and create a listener. Now, the the reason this is important to create a listener right now or not is because if I was going to do a pen test, right, if I'm prepping for the pen test, I'm obviously not going to create the listener now and just have it running for 10 days while I'm getting ready and then go send it off. So we'll go ahead and do it now because we are going to do it right now. And you can see it actually launches Metasploit for you and runs the correct exploit. It's perfect. So you can see here the payload. Boom. We're on multi-handler ex multi exploit. Okay, guys. Welcome back. So as you can see, I purposely have my screen half hidden. The reason for that is because once I plug this in, which is the payload, it's going to pop up. And it's going to give me or put my public IP address in there. So I'm going to clear it. And then I'll move it over. But I want to show you guys. So here's my laptop. Here's the payload that we just generated, that we just created. Let's go ahead and hit insert it. And you're going to hear it. And I have auto run turned off. So now when I open it, there's only one file in there. And it's called payload, which obviously we wouldn't want that to be the name. So we ran it. And you can see right there, it's generating right there. So let's go ahead and clear Boom. So now we have a session. So now if we do sessions, tech I to interact and two, because it popped up and said it's session two, we have a, a interpreter shell on this computer. And one way you can tell is, I don't know if you guys can see this. You probably can't see, but it's just a picture of the payload on the flash drive. So let's do screenshot. All right, so now there's our screenshot, user share set. So that's one thing to keep in mind too, is you notice it's saving them in the set, not in the actual um, interpreter, which is fine. Just keep that in mind when you're doing it. So let's go back and go to user share set and just see if that screenshot is at the same computer that I just showed you guys. Do, 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 set. All right. And you can see here it is KH. And there it is. That is my computer that I'm showing you guys right now. So we have a screenshot of it. We have pretty much everything. Um, let's see if we can. Let's webcam list. See if it even has one. I honestly don't know if the webcam on this um, computer works anymore. So let's see if it has one. Okay, so it does have a USB webcam, which doesn't make sense since 
there is no USB webcam plugged in, but okay. Um, so let's try um, webcam, and what was it called? Snap, snapshot, yeah, webcam snap, and we'll see. If it does get one, it's just going to be in my chest right now, but I just want to see if it actually gets one. Okay, and you can see right there, that's the shirt I'm wearing. So how creepy is that, right? So isn't that crazy, though, to think about that you can now, just from doing that, so we'll go ahead and delete this. Uh, it's being used. Okay, so keep that in mind, guys, that that's how easy this can be. So... That's pretty much how easy it is. I mean, right there, you saw, I plugged the USB in. It, if it had autoplay on, it would have autoplayed it. Then I just ran the payload, and boom, we have it. Now, a lot of people will think, okay, well, you need access to the system, though, right? That's not the point of this exercise or this learning this. The point of this is simply to get a bunch of sticks, USB sticks, that are inconspicuous, as you're doing a pen test, drop them on the ground, right? Near certain people, things like that. Um, and watch how many people plug them in. Because I bet you anything, a lot of companies have a lot of policies in place about clicking phishing emails and all that stuff. But not a lot of companies have policies about plugging USBs in. Okay? And this is why you should. This is a very, very scary tool to use. So keep that in mind, guys, when you guys are messing with this. You can see I could dump the hashes. I could do, I mean, you guys have used Meterpreter. You could do all kinds of stuff on here. And from here, I have a way in. And guess what? Until this computer gets restarted, it's going to keep calling back. So I'm going to get more sessions, right? And then from here, I could go, I could start laterally moving. I could start pri privilege escalation, all kinds of stuff. So keep that in mind, guys. Here, and you can see, I mean, you have a full interpreter shell. There's nothing, you know, weird here. I plugged in the USB, popped up. Um, do the exact same thing. There are a couple of side notes that I didn't show on here because I want to show, tell you guys. Um, the port forwarding, you have to have port forwarding, okay? You have to use your public IP address because it's going to route out to the internet and come back in. So you have to port forward and you have to use your public IP address. So keep that stuff in mind, guys. Um, but here is a clear indication that it works. And here's a clear indication of what you can do with it if you really wanted to. Now, if you get five or six people to plug these in, you already own five or six systems that you now can make persistent. You can do all kinds of stuff. You can hash dump them. And then anyone that's logged into that, I mean, there's endless, endless results here. So hopefully you guys like this video. Hopefully you guys like the content. If you do, make sure you hit the thumbs up. Make sure you sub. That helps out way more than you guys know. And if you guys really like the content, you can definitely support by using the Patreon. I appreciate you guys and hope you guys have a great day.